do, 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 do. And we are live. Welcome back, Gappers. I'm here with some awesome Gap Year alums. We've got Rachel and Abby. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, guys, this is such a great opportunity to really hear from like real life Gapper experiences. So I have a bunch of questions I'm going to be asking Rachel and Abby over the next, uh, uh, what do we have, like 45 minutes? Or no, that's a lie. What, what time is it? Yeah, 45 minutes. Uh, I'm getting confused with the time zones. Um, it's, but if you guys have questions, drop them in the chat. Uh, Rachel and Abby, I forgot to mention, there's like a maybe like a 10 second delay between us chatting in the in the chat box. So uh, we'll keep it flowing. I'll keep pulling in questions as I see them. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm so excited to hear from you both. <laughs> Uh, yes, Hot Gun, the session is being recorded. All of our sessions are being recorded and you can access them all um, after in the replay section. So uh, to kick us off, uh, let, let's just have a quick introduction. Who you are, tell us a little about you and your gap year experience and kind of where you are now. Just like quick two minutes. Uh, Rachel, you want to kick us off? Sure. So uh, hi, everyone. My name's Rachel. I had the pleasure of taking a gap year pre-COVID, which feels like a lifetime ago for all of us, now that we've been accustomed to Zoom and virtual meetings. I can't meet everyone, sadly, today face-to-face. -face. But my gap year was mentally calculating it because it feels like forever. It was September of 2019. So I would have taken off, not this year, but the year before. And I took the year off kind of to find myself. I was a little bit confused of what I wanted to do. Um, when you're in high school, there's all this pressure, it feels like, when you're in that grade 12 year to conform to either going to school or going straight to work. And I kind of wanted to have that time to figure myself out. So I took a gap year. I It was it was pre-COVID, so I was fortunate to have, you know, a lot of in-person work experience during that time. Then COVID hit and, you know, employment started going down the drain and people started adapting and doing different things. And yeah, but but I, I ended up finding employment, you know, amid the crazy pandemic. And I did some awesome volunteer work throughout. And then I started school in September of 2020, more math, mental math. And I'm currently still in school at Western doing health sciences. So I, I'm so happy I took that gap year. And we're going to get more into it after. And I can't wait to hear more about you guys in the chat and in the comments. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. And Abby, tell us a little about you. Hi, everybody. My name's Abby, and I'm from Belmont, Ontario. I'm a farmer, and that was kind of the theme of my gap year. Uh, I went on the gap year after I did a college program that I loved, transferred to university, didn't love that experience, and was not enjoying it. So I took my gap year over the past year. So it was entirely a COVID gap year. <laughs> But it was fantastic. I worked in three different provinces on three different kinds of farms. I toured a lot of different farms. And in the second half of my gap year, I started my own business. And that was a farm. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> so and now I'm now back in school my second week in I'm going to school in Alberta now. So not the same university that I was at. And it's going really good. That's awesome. And also, it's so cool to meet uh, a female farmer. It's so awesome. Um, I also live on a farm, so we're going to definitely connect later. <laughs> That's awesome. That is amazing. So, okay, just in those introductions, there's so much to unpack there, and I'm really excited to dive a little deeper. But, you know, okay, to ask you like an overall arching question, with, with all these different experiences, starting your own business, doing volunteer and work experiences, entering a crazy pandemic, what was your biggest takeaway? Can you can you define that? Or maybe there's a few, you know, what does that look like? Feel free either of you to, to jump in. Rachel, do you wanna go? <laughs> sure, so uh, that's a pretty impactful question. So. I think the reason I took the gap year, I didn't even say where I'm from. I'm from, I'm from city. You guys are both country. I'm from Toronto. <laughs> so I'm kind of the opposite. So it's nice that there's a whole bunch of different perspectives and gap years that, you know, people go through different experiences. The reason why I took the gap year was because I was in a spot in grade 12 where I, I want to find myself. And I felt that starting in a program or starting being hesitant on 
choosing something to do for the rest of my life. When you pick a program, you're, you're kind of limited to career options and you have to navigate through these unlimited career options, but you have to pick a certain path. And I was hesitant to pick a, one specific path. So I, I took that gap year to really figure out who I was and to figure out who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do in regards to, you know, studying afterwards or maybe finding a job that I'd like, because that's the most important thing. You want to find a career that you're going to like for the rest of your life. And I was, I was so scared to pick something and have doubts or have, you know, second guessing what I wanted to do. And I think, you know, I was able to, well, we'll talk more about specifics, but I was able to find a career I liked and that I enjoyed and that I saw myself doing in the future. So taking that gap year gave me the clarity that I needed to, you know, move forward and to start school in a program that I liked and work towards a career that I wanted to do for the rest of my life, not just conforming to everyone just going straight to school and figuring out along the way I wanted to have some sort of destination before I started. Yeah, so I, it was just that clarity that the gap year gave me or I would have never had that clarity without it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think on mine, I was able to explore a lot of things I had always wanted to pursue. So the thing about being a farmer is it's often difficult to leave your farm because there's daily work every day that you cannot get away from. So I wanted to see what other farms were doing and, and see different kinds of farms. Um, before I went on this gap year, like I was gone for five months on this gap year. I had never left home for more than two weeks. And all of a sudden I was just off across the country. But I really needed to do that to see which things I didn't want to do. Because there was definitely some things where I was like, yeah, this is not for me. Um, and yeah, I was able to see so many different operations while I was out there and, and actually do the work and know, not just by visiting a place, but work there and, and know if it's for me or not. And, and with the school part of things, since I was at a school, I didn't like taking the time to, to get away from home and be on my own and just have my own perspective on things. It was really helpful. There was, I didn't realize how much other people, whether friends or just people that had influenced my decision to go to that particular school. And then getting away, I was able to figure out more like what I actually wanted to do. And now I'm at a different school <laughs> that is much better <laughs> for me. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you definitely, yeah, Rachel, I love the clarity aspect. I think like that's a huge takeaway, like just getting clarity on what's next. And Abby, like getting real world experience, like. We don't know what that's like until we leave high school. And if we don't really take that intentional pause, we end up just kind of snowballing and maybe not really knowing, like you end up in something eventually and then you're like, wait a minute, maybe I don't even like this anymore. So that's really, really awesome that you're able to really get this kind of holistic, well-rounded, well well-rounded experience. So I'm losing my voice and my speaking abilities. Um, I have another special guest to add to the stream. I'm gonna just add as main in. Hello, welcome. Hi, everybody. Hello. Sorry about hopping in late. I was having technical difficulties, as we're all certainly used to with the pandemic. Oh yes, we know them well. <laughs> Please give us a quick intro to you, your story, um, and uh, if you wanted to share your biggest takeaway as well from your gap year. Totally. Just to um, launch in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just listening to what Rachel and Abby were saying. And, you know, a lot of the things uh, that I went through on my gap year were very similar. I think we had some um, interesting experiences that everybody who takes a gap year tends to have in common. But um, my name is Esmain. I uh, graduated high school in 2020, right into the pandemic. We didn't even get to have a grad, as I'm sure same thing must have happened to quite a few of you, maybe that are in the audience or that graduated, you know, even this year going out of uh, the first year of lockdowns. And um, so I had always imagined myself as the type of person who would go straight into university. And I never even necessarily considered a gap year to be an option until pretty much right before 
you know, I had to make the choice. And the, the way that that came about was I'd been working at the time on a number of projects that I was passionate about, mostly in the software and tech space. Um, and some of those projects ended up turning into a startup that I was working on with a team. Um, so that was super exciting. And by the time the pandemic rolled around and, you know, I had to start deciding whether or not I wanted to go off to university, uh, I decided to take a gap year um, and just figure it out, you know, and I think that's something that Rachel and Abby were talking about as well in terms of just taking a step back when things don't necessarily feel like they're going into the direction you want to. And uh, instead of forcing that and going into, you know, a headstrong direction without necessarily having a moment of reflection or some time to just step back from everything that you're doing and take a look at the bigger picture. Um, that That's something that certainly appealed to me. And during my gap year, you know, uh, I was able to meet lots of amazing people. We're continuing to work on the startup. And uh, I think from there, the surprising decision that I'd made at the end of my gap year was that I chose not to go back to university, at least for any time soon, um, and just continue working on, you know, with the amazing people that I've now been able to meet, the, the company that we're now building, uh, which is super exciting. And I think my biggest takeaway from my gap year would probably just to not necessarily uh, force myself into certain choices just because somebody else says or conventional wisdom says it's the right thing to do for the lowest common denominator, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like in a lot of situations in life, we get advice from lots of different people. And at the end of the day, that just culminates into this like super nonspecific blob of things that any general person should do rather than the thing that's right for you. Um, and I think taking a gap year, especially for all of you in the audience who are going into one, is such an amazing opportunity to even take time away from all of those influences, you know, everything that your teachers think, that your peers might think, you know, throughout your schooling and, and be able to get in your own headspace a little bit to figure out what's right for you um, and not necessarily something that everybody else is telling you to do. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. you. Like, you're just inspiring me. I'm like, I should take my gap here finally. <laughs> this is awesome. And, uh, you know, you're speaking on all these kind of like, it, it sounds like these journeys for all of you where it was constantly new shifts, new changes, especially because of the state of the world, right? There's, we entered a pandemic there. We had to shift everything about our lives. So I'm wondering, you know, I think obviously this is very, um, you know, this is reality for gappers this year as well is like we're still in the pandemic and things are changing every single day so you know whether it's pandemic related or not what was you know share with us one of those kind of big challenges or maybe even like transformative moments of your gap year where maybe you had to make a hard decision or you had to really shift the way that you were your mindset or maybe the next action you were going to take and how you overcame that how how what what was that like for you and anyone feel free to jump in first we'll do this like popcorn style <laughs> um i can think of for me a couple actually there was there was one point where i had to decide like to keep going which was uh when i was working in the prairies uh fantastic experience but it was a long way from home very different um i felt pretty isolated the first week when i first got there but i was like you know I, there's a reason why i came out here i've always wanted to experience this and i'm very glad i stuck it out because i met some fantastic people there. It was such a good experience, but I really had to tell myself to keep going at that point in time. And then the second one was, uh, I did make a major, ch major change because of the pandemic is by the time it was December, I had been gone for five months working. Um, the pandemic was freaking me out a lot. Then I was like, my home is in Ontario. I was in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. I was watching the news. <laughs> the news is uh, pretty grim at that point in time. And I did decide to come home. And uh, I, so I gave my notice at the job I was currently at and I flew home to my family. And I think that was a good decision. It was kind of what I mentally needed at the time. And I had done a lot so far and um, I made the change that I had to do at the time. That's awesome. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit to that about adapting and changes. So with, the pandemic, my gap year is different because it started 
no COVID and ended in the middle of COVID. <laughs> so I, I started off with an employment and I was, I, I always wanted to do something within the healthcare field and something related to, I don't know, the healthcare industry, the medical industry. So I started off in a rehab hospital, working with the programming, doing things like, you know, their pool activities or working with them in the gym because a lot of them were wheelchair bound. You know, they, they didn't really get to have the same opportunities as we did. So making activities and helping foster activities for those children that, you know, were lived their lives with a wheelchair, but it was a great experience. And I, I really got to learn. I really, I'm, I'm looking at the chat. I'm going to address something really important in the chat too, but I, I really got to learn the importance of, you know, the things that we have in our lives and, you know, sometimes we take things for granted. And that's that's basically the thing that I talked for granted was that job because when COVID hit, you know, everyone's social distancing, I lost that job. So, you know, with, with the pandemic happening and students were in need of job and employment and people were social distancing, everyone was losing jobs. So I ended up because I had, you know, because I had like first aid and because I was, I was thinking about this healthcare opportunity a healthcare experience. And I was looking at things with the pandemic starting, uh, placement started where, you know, they were asking for students to be student nurses, so to speak, just, you know, walking around the floors, disinfecting things, entertaining, you know, residents. It was at an old folks home, like a long-term care home. So that was my job being an essential worker. And I, I never thought of doing something like that. You know, had it no, been no COVID or no gap year, I would have been in school without that experience. And that experience, you know, led me to wanting to do a career in healthcare and wanting to be maybe a nurse one day or going to school and studying healthcare and wanting to do that as a full-time job. So I, I'm, in reading the chat, you know, it's, it's scary thinking of school and how the gap year flies. It flies, it, it flew so fast. I, I, now this is my second year and I, time has really flown. So that's where you have to make the most of this gap year, even though it's online, you know, <laughs> the snaps for claps, you have to take the time and look at all your interests. And, you know, even though it's not an in-person gap year, like you can't really travel as much. There's so many opportunities and you just have to have an open mind and be optimistic and just take everything with a grain of salt because you never know, maybe just as Isman said, you know, you might not go to school because you find a career opportunity that's even better than something that school can offer. So it's just, it's just being optimistic and having an open mind. And that's something that I really had to adapt to when the pandemic hit for sure. Thank you for those points, Rachel. And I think we certainly had some similar experiences in that regard as well. Um, on the topic when it comes to changes and taking advantage of opportunities, but also just, you know, putting yourself out there, um, you might find that it's actually pretty hard to make friends <laughs> on a gap year, especially because you're no longer, you know, in that setting that you've always known where you're constantly around people conveniently that are the same age as you, roughly interested in the same things. Um, and I think that can definitely be a big adjustment for a lot of people who choose to go on a gap year is the fact that you might see a lot of your peers, a lot of your classmates, and even some of your closest friends start to move away to university or, you know, start to find new groups that you don't necessarily are, or you're not necessarily able to be a part of simply because of the location that you're not um, in, which specifically is a university campus, right? Um, but I think, you know, adding on to what Rachel said, it is pretty important to find those things that you love to do, you know, whether it's extracurriculars or whether it's hobbies or, or certain things within community service and try and seek out those interest groups. You know, um, if you're taking a gap year, the best place to probably start is the group that we have right here. Um, but I think pursuing those kinds of groups that are all around the internet, you know, whether it's on Discord or on Facebook or, you know, there's often meetups that'll happen in your local community, um, I think is a really great way to make friends that, in a point in your life where you have to be very deliberate um, about making connections with people, it won't just happen um, if you sit in your room and a lot of great people will certainly pass you by if you're not out there. Um, so I think I would certainly encourage everybody on their gap year to try and find those communities that they have common interests with and make some new friends. Because um, I know it can definitely be uh, a little bit lonely if you don't uh, catch on to that as quickly as you might otherwise want to. 
just going to add quickly, I was telling Jazz before we started this, you guys are so lucky that there's this network that Michelle has created with with the Gap Year Association, because I was telling her that I never, this, I joined the Gap Year Association running to Michelle. Michelle, help me, I'm in this Gap Year. I don't know what I'm doing. You guys are so lucky that you have this network of people that are, are going through it with you and navigating and, and going through this crazy time, because it is a crazy time, but you guys can go through it together. And that's such an amazing thing that you guys have with this Discord group and with the association itself. So definitely take advantage and make the most of that for sure. Yes, yes. Building community, huge and so challenging, not only just in the pandemic, but I was mentioning earlier, like making friends in your adult life is actually hard. It's ridiculous, but it is because your life is constantly evolving. You're doing new things. You're going to different places. You're not in the same space physically all the time, especially now. And I'm curious, I mean, I really appreciate um, you diving deeper into that. And I'm wondering, do you guys have any like tips or, or, you know, just um, other suggestions around like how to build community outside of th this virtual space because this is what we're here for uh, but you know maybe it can be around like networking or you know what are some suggestions you had or, or experiences that you had in your gap year that you can share around how you met people that maybe helped you in career advancement or just in general hangouts you know what what did that look like for y'all <laughs> uh, I'm gonna add something here um, I'd say don't be afraid of unconventional friendships or like being friends with people older than you. <laughs> like the woman I worked for in Quebec, I love working for a female farmer. That was like very inspiring for me. And she is so cool. I ask her questions all the time and we're still very much in contact. So I didn't really make, I made a few friends my age, but most of my main connections are adults that are like great mentors for me. Um, in Saskatchewan, I was running a combine and there was a woman who drove the grain buggy. These are big pieces of equipment if you're not familiar with agriculture. And so these two women driving these massive equipment and that was pretty sweet. So that was very inspiring for me as well. And uh, that's what I would say. Don't be afraid to look outside of just your own age. Yes, Rachel, I got, you got my snapping going on. No, <laughs> Spill the word out of my mouth. Mentoring is like, I, I had a mentor during my gap year because you're, you're on this time and there's, it's not like school where you have a schedule and you have to go to school every day. You have to wake up for the bus. You have to, you kind of make your own schedule, which is the beautiful thing about the gap year. You get to choose what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. You get to do everything yourself. And as much as that responsibility is a blessing, it's a little bit of a blessing in disguise. And I'll tell you why, because you get a little lost along the way. So that's where I, I had, Abby stole the word out of my mouth. I had a mentor and, you know, it was someone that was older than me. <laughs> we literally had that same experience. And it, it's such an important experience is having someone that you can turn to. And, you know, if, if even if they didn't take a gap year, if, if it's about something that you want to do in the future, like if they're in the same program as you or if, it's a career that you want to do in the future. It's just someone that you can turn to and talk to and, you know, get advice from help that that was someone who actually, sorry, hair everywhere. That was someone that helped me, you know, navigate doing that position like as an essential worker, because it was something that I would talk to them about what my interests were. And they pushed me towards that. And it was thanks to that person that I figured out what I actually want to do. So mentoring is so important. And getting a good mentor will really set you up for your future, for sure. So I have so many snaps for y'all. Like this is just <laughs> endless wisdom. Um, it, I mean, it. I, I've always believed that networking is such like, I, I, I'm almost in going into my thirties and my entire career has been based on just meeting people and finding opportunities. And like I mentioned this before again, I want to reiterate it. Like we live in this incredible time where you can do anything. You can literally do anything. Like so you might become the next as main and start like a crazy, awesome tech startup this year. Like the possibilities are literally endless. 
But, you know, on that note, thinking about just like, you know, if, if we have some gappers in here or just looking for kind of like general experience, like just trying to build their resume, you know, just wanting to make a little bit of cash, you know, what, what do you recommend? What are some jobs that you would recommend during your gap year to kind of like build skills, save a little bit of money and also kind of, you know, start building a community outside of, you know, your high school group? Um, okay, I would, I'm kind of going to tie this back to networking, um, cause it's going to depend like what your particular passion is, but, um, with me for fun. So like I worked several different jobs on my gap year and my best is, advice is to just, just ask, <laughs> like I did not, one of these jobs, there was a job posting. I applied to it the traditional way, the rest of the jobs, my tours, everything else that I did. I would get to a new area and be like, oh, look, uh, Google online. I really want to go to this farm. That is exactly the kind of farm that I'm interested in. I would shoot them an email or I would call them and tell them who I was. I think your farm looks great. I'd love to come learn from you. Nine times out of 10, people are very, very happy to speak to somebody who's interested in what they're doing. So like I said, one of those jobs I read a book about these people. I thought they looked really cool. I sent them an email with my resume and I was like, do you want me? <laughs> and they did. Uh, that's not always going to work, but um, I think that's a great way to network is rather than trying to find, wait till the job posting comes up, just know what you're interested in, what you like, find those places and just reach out yourself. And it can be scary, but you know, the worst that happens is they're going to say no and they'll say that very respectfully and you can find somebody else after that. I absolutely love what Abby just said um, about, you know, make your own opportunities. Uh, you know, some of the greatest opportunities you're ever going to have are things that aren't formally listed or, or thrown your way. Um, they're just kind of things that either start up from a conversation or uh, like Abby just said, maybe start from reading a book about some people that you find really interesting and then you go out of your way to contact them um, and they give you the light of day and it turns into something way more than that. Um, a funny story that I have about my gap year. At the time, you know, I was also exploring what do I want to do with my gap year? Do I want to get a job that's outside of, you know, the company that I'm working on at the time? And so I just decided to start applying to a bunch of places while I was, you know, working on my startup. And over time, I kind of forgot about it because I had a bunch of other opportunities come up from having conversations with people and, and running into, you know, people that were in influential positions um, who were able to give back and wanted to give back to people that were really interested in the same sorts of things that they were. Um, and a few months later, you know, when I was busy with building the company and, and doing some other exciting things with those people, um, I started getting some of the replies back from the jobs that I'd totally forgotten I'd applied for. Um, and I remember like it was just rejection after rejection after rejection. And it, it was so interesting as a lesson to me because, you know, at the time I was looking at the process that you're generally taught in school is how you get a job, right? You write a resume, you, you put in an application, you go through this checklist of things that you have to do. And at the end of that, there's a promise of getting an interview and, and potentially getting hired, right? Um, but the thing that I realized is, wow, out of the 20 jobs that I just applied to, you know, where I went through that entire checklist and did everything that I was told to do, I didn't get a single one of those opportunities. Meanwhile, um, nine out of 10 times, just like Abby said, when I reached out to somebody and created my own opportunity, even if I was, you know, hesitant or scared to go and talk to the person at first, it turned out to, at the very least, open some doors that I didn't think, you know, would necessarily open for me. And so, I would definitely, you know, encourage you guys to do exactly the kind of things that Abby does. I think it's absolutely awesome. Yeah, that, that's perfect. And I think just to, to connect that to the chat with, you know, jobs and looking at, you know, different opportunities with careers and sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. That That's how I found my mentor and that's how you find mentors. I mean, I know there's networking events on Zoom. I'm sure there's you know, I'm sure there's tons of things online, but it's just by applying to jobs and just emailing random people. Like it's just even, okay, I, I'm going to go a little into school, but it's even like if you're, if you're looking for an opportunity, 
sorry, I'm connecting this to school, but if you're looking for an opportunity, even at school or outside of school, you just email the person, hey, I saw you're doing this, I'm not even paid just to help out. Do you mind if I just sit in on a presentation you're doing or the work? I read your work. It's super interested. Do you mind if do you mind if I help you along the side, even for a few hours a week, just writing and editing your stuff? Just those cold emails, just sending those out to some people in the career, in the careers that you want to do. Most of the time, those are people that they read those emails and they remember when they were in your shoes themselves. They read those emails and they say, hey, I remember when I was reaching out to people that are in my shoes right now. So they want to help. They want to help people on gap years. They want to help students. They want they, their their job. They they get enjoyment out of helping people. I'm I would be the same if I had someone email me. Hey, I, I saw you do this. It's really cool. Do you mind if I help out? I would love to take on someone like that. So I, I didn't do it the social media route. I did it just the cold email. Hey, I saw you're doing this. It looks really cool. Or you have a career in this. Do you mind giving me some advice? That, that was the way I found my mentors. And that's kind of how I navigated through mentoring or finding someone that I could relate to. And eventually finding someone in the job field that I wanted to and using them as a resource and as someone to talk to and look up to when I was applying and doing other things like that. So yeah, that, that was the way I did it. I love it. Um, you know, something that that reminded me of Rachel is especially younger people have this tendency to discount their worth um, when it comes to getting in a room of older people. And, and, you know, that's totally understandable. You know, sometimes it just comes down to, oh my God, these people have so much experience, so many degrees, you know, they're the best in their fields or whatever. What could I possibly bring to the table? And, and that's definitely still a feeling that I get all the time, but um, I'm, I'm just going to count this as my second gap year. And so, um, bear with me with the story here. So yesterday, um, I went to the summit, uh, for kind of economic growth related and business leader stuff. Um, and so I'd gotten an invite from somebody who was pretty prominent in the business community and, and I showed up. Um, and when I, when I got there, you know, I just, I saw the list of attendees, right. There were name tags everywhere. And I was just seeing names of like, people who were absolute, like, these are people you hear about in the media. These are the leaders of their industries. And I was just starstruck. I went, what the heck am I doing in this room? Um, and then a friend of mine, who's a number of years older, uh, ended up joining that event as well a little bit later on. And he kind of saw me shuffling around in the corner when most of the action was going on in the middle of the room. And, and he came up to me and said, hey, you know, I, I've noticed that you're kind of discounting yourself. You're not necessarily going out and putting yourself out there and talking to those people. And I, I totally get why that is. You know, these are some of the most famous people in, in your respective industries that you could possibly find here in the city. Um, they've done amazing work. Some of them have invented, you know, entire markets um, and, and taken so many different companies uh, to huge successes. So I, I, I get the fact that you as a young person might not necessarily feel like you're in the right crowd. But then he went on to remind me that you earned an invite to that table just as much as everybody else did. And you had a right to be at that table um, to the same extent that everyone else did. And I think, you know, that concept of you earned your way there is something that we often tend to forget, especially when we're in our gap years going about and asking, you know, people to mentor us or asking how we can provide value, you know, to someone or asking for an opportunity. Um, I would definitely say, uh, Keep trying to practice that lesson. I certainly am as well. Um, you know, if you feel like you're in a room where you don't belong, I promise that's not the case. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in that room in the first place. You earned your way there and um, you absolutely deserve everything that's coming your way. And so be proud of that. You know, be proud of the fact of you are in the places that you've made it to and, and make the most of it. Oh man, speaking the truth. You know what? I, I really resonate with that. Thank you for sharing that because one thing everyone needs to remember is it doesn't matter how old you are. We all have something to learn from each other and you would be shocked what you might teach a 50 year old who's been in the industry for 
a hundred years, that doesn't make any sense, but you know what I mean? Like you have no idea how much value you actually offer, not only to spaces, but to people. You you have no idea who, could, who you could come by and inspire one day. So thank you, Esme. That's such a beautiful message and so, so important. And step into that inner confidence you had when you were like three, you know? We were not afraid to ask questions. We were not afraid to open doors. We were not afraid to go into spaces that we probably didn't belong in. Have that courage, have that 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 confidence to step in and take up space. You deserve it. And it's your learning journey and it's you're in control of it. You know, and sometimes you might embarrass yourself. Who can I think we might have lost Jazz. You'll forget it in 10 years. Trust me. How many times I've embarrassed my no. I'm back. I got, I was getting really inspired and crazy in that, in that speech, but just telling you to get out there. Your inspiration and, um, broke the, broke the yeah. feed. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You know, Rachel, I have a question for you. I'm curious, was it hard to go back to school after like such a crazy, amazing year? Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> It was hard. It, it was, I, I talked about that before about that freedom that you have so much of and then you're back into routine, you're back into schedule. But it, it's ironic because having that freedom gave me the discipline to conform to that schedule and to, cause when you're in school, there's deadlines, like it's already second week and I have 80 pages to read for Tuesday. So it, it, it's, 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 yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm dying inside a little bit. I'm trying to contain myself, but it's, it's intense. But that gap year gave me the discipline to, you know, to, to get back into that schedule and to remember all the great things that I accomplished in that gap year. And to, the most important thing I accomplished was that I found myself, I think, like, that was that was the best thing that I accomplished that gap year. So finding myself through that time, let me, you know, focus on school, focus on friendship, focus on the things that matter, because there's a lot of distractions when you know, you come out of high school and you go straight into university, having that time for yourself to, you know, focus on what matters and what's important gave me the discipline. That's the key word. It was the discipline to, to focus and to do well and to just get into, get into school because you had that time to practice and work on yourself. Yeah. Can I add something here? <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, so I'm back in school now, it's the second week, and it, yeah, like, exactly like Rachel said, it is difficult. I was having such a good learning journey off out in the real world. I'm actually surprised, though, that I'm easing into it. it I think it is a little easier than I thought it was going to be, because my outlook on school is different now, actually. Like, pre-gap year, I was, I have to be the top of the class. I have to get 100% on every assignment. Like, I was really really intense at school and uh and that's that's fine like I don't regret that I think that's a good thing but like now that I'm back in school what matters more to me is both the school and what else I can learn like last weekend I went and toured two ranches in the area so might I get a couple percent lower on my assignment because I didn't spend all weekend on it maybe and I'm fine with that I'm not saying don't do well in school but my value is now less like everything has to be perfect. I'm just going to learn this to get it correct on the test. Like if there's stuff that they're teaching me that's really valuable, I'm going to focus on that. But it has really changed my outlook on the whole school thing. So that's my perspective. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this has been amazing. I want to talk to y'all forever because you're all you like it's just hearing your stories and experiences. They're all so unique and different. And I hope that really shows everyone here who's joining us. Like everyone's gap year is going to look different. And it's really, it's like you're in control of designing this year, right? And um we, we have to start winding down a little bit here. And I'd love to um there's a few questions in the chat. I apologize if I didn't really like specifically get to them. They they were some of them were covered in the beginning. So just head back and watch the recording after all make sure it's in the replay channel. But I love um Hodgun's asking about resources, you know, a specific subreddits, would you recommend men to network and find mentors. So any other kind of resources that you can share with the community while we're while we're live? Um, and th this is going to sound a little bit weird, 
but Twitter, I'm serious. Like it's, it's actually amazing how good the Twitter algorithm is at showing you people that have common interests that you do, but also people that are open to talking to you about things. Like there are so many moments where somebody who was either super influential in the tech industry or, or really well known or had just exited and built this massive company um, literally just went on Twitter and tweeted, hey, here's my literal personal cell phone number. Reach out to me you know, if you're interested. And they might not even have that many followers. You know, many of them only have a few hundred, maybe a few tens of thousands of followers. But there's so many tweets where people are going to be like, hey, if you're looking for this sort of an opportunity or, you know, j just reach out to me. Um, I I'm happy to help out. And, and it's really as little as that. And I, I text these people all the time now because um, the Twitter algorithm gets really good at figuring out that you're looking for those kinds of things. Um, and like, it is just absolutely amazing how many completely freebie opportunities are out there and, and how many amazing people you'll meet just by, you don't even have to tweet. You don't necessarily even have to be active. I, I would just recommend create an account, start following people that you're interested in. And I, I promise you're gonna be surprised by the results. And I'm just gonna add to that. It's scary at first doing that. <laughs> we're, we're talking like, we're, we're, we, we have these massive ego. It's scary, like reaching out to people. I, I remember reaching out to my first, uh, I'm going to say meant it didn't work. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but my first failed mentor, we could say that it, it's scary because you know, you're so much younger and you don't really know what to say. You freeze up. But after a while, you just drop that fear and you realize that you're, you're, you're really doing it for and, and they're there to help you too, the good ones. The good ones are there. They, they see you not as wasting their time. They see <laughs> exactly the good ones. They're there. They, they see that you want to learn from them and they're more than happy to give you that resources. Those resources, it's just breaking that fear inside and all those voices that are telling you, oh, that person is, is, is they don't care about you. You're, you're so much younger. You don't have anything to bring to the table. You do. It's just overcoming those voices in your head and that that was something that was really difficult for me was telling myself that it's okay you know rejection is fine <laughs> you, all those jobs sometimes you know you're not going to get every job that you apply to you just keep learning and that's the most important thing on your gap year is just learn like you should learn 20 things I had a book of everything I learned on my gap year there's so much things that you're going to learn just get ready because it's going to be a little overwhelming. <laughs> the person that you were starting that gap year is going to be a different person when the person that leaves that gap year. It, it, it's night and day for sure. Uh, the only thing I would add with resources is like, maybe if you have a failed mentor like Rachel, that, that's okay because maybe, maybe you can ask them, okay, this isn't, depends on the situation. Can you, do you know somebody else that might help me or like once you make one good connection, if you can just find one good connection in the thing that you're interested in, walk in a store or whatever the thing you like to do is and meet one person who can pass you on to more people, that is how it, it keeps going. The people I met, all of them were like, oh, well, you're going here next. I don't know, five farmers in that area. Here you go. Here's their phone numbers. Call them. That was, that's what I found was useful. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh my goodness, this has been so inspiring. Um, everyone, actually, all three of these incredible humans have been on our Gap Year podcast. So if you want to learn more about their stories, if you want to hear from more Gappers and incredible individuals that you could learn from, that you could mentor, that could be your mentor, jump over to our podcast, the Gap Year Podcast. Uh, dot podbean.com. I'm actually going to drop all these resources in the chat. Also, speaking of mentorship, mm, our game plan membership, we have a whole thing on just how to get a mentor. What does that look like? How to connect with the right people? So if you want to dive deeper into that, connect with me. We can chat more about game plan. I'm also giving another one away today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So super, super exciting. Um, again, Asmain, Abby, Rachel, thank you so much for joining me for this session. I know that this is like incredible incredible priceless value that everyone's getting from you. This is incredible. So thank you so much. Um, 
I'm also just, uh, we're, we're just jumping over into our sessions now. So just wanted to quickly let you all know sessions are opening now for the next uh, half an hour. So if you're looking to work abroad this year, check out the uh, check out that session. It's run by International Experience Canada. They can help you get set up with how to get a visa to work abroad this year. Um, we've got Amanda over in the Passion Projects uh, session. Uh, we've got Luke over in Outdoor Adventure and I'm gonna be running Social and Environmental Justice. So I'll catch you guys over there in a second. Uh, as main Rachel Abbey, again, thank you so much. This has been uh, such a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom with our community. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Jess. Thanks so much. Yeah. I canceled a meeting. I'm at the office right now, actually, to do this, and I don't regret oh, it. Oh, you're awesome. Me. Rachel and I, <laughs> you guys are amazing. So Jess, thank you so much for your energy. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. You.